Daphne here from Steam Design Lab with the Box Catapult Design Project. These are the materials you'll need for the project. And these are the tools. For my project, I'll be using a tissue box, but you can use just about any box that's similar in size. I'm starting by wrapping the box in masking tape. I'm doing this for two reasons. First, because the box is a little flimsy, it'll secure the ends and add a bit of extra strength. Second, it'll make it easier for me to mark the locations of the holes and cuts I will be adding in the next step. The most important dimension is the width. For this design, your box needs to be narrower than the length of a pencil because it will be acting as the catapult structure and needs to support both ends of the pencil. Next, I'll be marking the location of the throwing arm's pivot point or fulcrum. I'm measuring one and a half inches up from the bottom and in from the front side. Then I'll draw a line parallel to the top edge, three quarters of an inch down. I made my first tick mark one and a quarter inch in from the front edge, then every one inch until I ran out of room. I'll repeat these steps on the other side, always measuring from the same front and top sides of my box. Turning the box with the back end facing up, I'll mark the slot for the throwing arm. I measured the width, then made a mark at the center. I made marks at a half inch from the center mark on either side. I did the same thing near the bottom and connected the marks to draw a U-shaped opening up to and over the top edge. The front face, I marked the center again, then made marks three quarters of an inch on both sides of it. Now it's time to start cutting. I trimmed the plastic from the top and made four diagonal cuts into each of the top corners, pressing the flaps in and down. Then I cut out the U-shaped opening on the back end. All the rest of the marks are for the holes. I'm using a handheld hole punch for all the holes along the top edge of the two sides and the front. I'm using a sharpened pencil to poke through the fulcrum hole at the bottom. Once I am done, I'll push the pencil through the punch holes to make them a little bigger. If you don't have a hole punch, you can use a pointed tool like an awl to start your holes, then enlarge them with a pencil like I did. Now I'm going to tape the edges down. I waited to do this after I punched the holes, because it was hard enough to punch through two layers of cardboard, and I didn't want to have an extra layer of tape to go through. A sharpened pencil will easily push through any tape that covers the holes. It's time to make the T-shaped throwing arm. Using rubber bands and masking tape, I'll connect two pencils in line and one crosswise near the bottom. I might have been able to get away by using just tape or just rubber bands, but I wanted it to be extra secure. You've probably noticed that one of my pencils is a different color than the others. The green pencil has a smooth round surface, unlike the yellow ones that have six flat sides. If you have a round pencil, you'll want to use it here, but it's really not a requirement. I'm using two rubber bands to secure the bottom pencil. The first is diagonally in one direction. Then I flip the throwing arm over and add the other one diagonally opposite. I'll add two pieces of tape in the same diagonal pattern. It's very important that the smallest end of the T-shape is less than one and a half inches from the center where it crosses its tip. Any longer and it'll hit the front and bottom surfaces of the box when it's installed. Now it's time to install the throwing arm. I push a pencil through the hole a few times to make sure it's not too tight. Then I push the wood end, or the pointed end, of the green pencil into one side as far as it can go. Then ease it back out to push the eraser through the hole on the other side. The holes along the top edge are for a pencil that will act as a stop. The throwing arm will hit this pencil and launch the marshmallow, or whatever you're using as a projectile. To start, I'll be linking together five rubber bands. You may decide to use more or less. 
but the advantage of this design is that it allows you to easily adjust the length or change out the bands whenever you'd like. To install the band, place one end of it through one of the holes you made on the front side. Wrap the band around the throwing arm and push the other end through the other hole. Push a pencil through both of the band's end loops to secure it. You can use tape to hold that pencil temporarily in place. Secure your cap to the end of the throwing arm with masking tape and the basic design of the box catapult is complete. There are two adjustable design features built into this catapult. By changing the position of the pencil on the front end, you can tighten and loosen the bands or simply change it out for another band that is either longer or shorter. This is how you can adjust the force applied to your marshmallow or projectile. By moving the top pencil forward or back along the holes, you can adjust the angle of your projectile when it is fired from the catapult. The angle will affect how high it goes and how far it travels. I've intentionally used only tape and rubber bands to secure this catapult. However, with a hot glue gun you can make a few minor changes that will improve the design by making it simpler to use and last much longer. The next video does just that. For more information on this project and others, check out our website at steamdesignlab.com.